Sneaking in was way easier than I thought. The family's security is as lax as ever. So, this is the Radiant Feldspar. <laughs> so luxurious. A pawn shop that grants wishes. Is there really a place like that on the ship? I'll find out for myself if the rumors are true or not. Is that... him? Huh. Vanished in the blink of an eye. So the Astral Express is here too. By the way, there's one more thing. Mr. Alfalfa and I discussed it. I'll present a gift to the Astral Express on behalf of the family as a token of gratitude for the nameless's contributions to Pentaconi. Please help me with the necessary arrangements. Right away, Miss Robin. Can I ask you something? Oh, greetings, Miss. Is there anything I can help you with? Do you know how to get to the pawn shop? Pawn shop? Ah, you must be talking about Lady Bonajay's place, right? I heard she offers uh, special services there. I've marked the pawn shop's location on your device. Please feel free to check it out. Lady Bonajade. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Was it from Silverwolf? Come to think of it, she disappeared after mentioning that she was going to meet with the Genius Society. Hmm. Huh. I wonder how things turned out for her. If I win, your chest is mine. Who said I was betting with you? I did. <laughs> they are still a ball of fire as ever. Sorry, but I've got to find Lady Bonajade first. Welcome to Bona Jade Exchange, Radiant Feldspar Branch. How should I address you, dear lady? Just call me Samuel. Samuel? Nice name. So what do you need, Miss Samuel? And what are you willing to give up in return? I want to keep on living. And for that, I'm willing to give up everything I have. Everything you have. That's right. Everything. Miss Samuel, I think you'd best turn around. It seems you're not quite familiar with the term pawn. What do you mean? I mean it literally. I sense your burning desire to live, but unfortunately, you don't have anything of equal value to offer. <laughs> Okay, a pawn shop that grants wishes. <laughs> I see, it's just a marketing gimmick. Well, that's quite a harsh accusation. I understand you may not fully comprehend what I mean, but don't worry, I'll help you understand. Go and talk to these people. They're all customers of my pawn shop. See for yourself if their wishes have come true. Once you've done that, Come back to me. I'll help you understand the true meaning of pawn, and make you realize what you're missing. That Lady Bonajade feels more like a... money lender rather than the owner of a pawn shop. Well, I've got nothing better to do anyway. I'll do as she says and see what happens. Hmm. <laughs> 
Which one should I pop? One, two, three, four, five. Don Hung and Void Ranger Jive. Don't change the words. No, it's not the best time to do that. Sorry. I'll catch up with you later. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> you stupid little girl. Coming back to lose more money, huh? Ugh, enough talk. Let's get started. This will be our final game. I'm betting my entire fortune. Oh, a big talker, huh? <laughs> All right. Let's see what you've got. This can't be! You lost to me ten times in a row. How could I possibly lose to you at such a crucial moment? It's true! Lady Bonna Jade has truly blessed me! <laughs> Finally, my luck has turned for the better! Great new era for Stacy, the Master Gambler, has arrived! <laughs> I've prepared a gift for you, Dorothy. Check this out. Whoa! What a beautiful necklace! Is it made of cymophane? It's stunning. How did you know I love jewelry made of cymophane? It has the same purple hue as the necklace my dad gave my mom. I've never told anyone about it. How did you find out, Del? So... So, will, will you go out with me? <laughs> I, I will. R really? I mean, really? I never said yes before because I thought you had no idea what I liked. But this gift made me realize you were actually paying attention all along, trying to learn everything about me. So, yes, I will. W wonderful! My, my wish has actually come true! So, shall we go, Dorothy? Let's go outside and enjoy the stunning views of the Twelve Hours! Yeah, let's go! Chirp, chirp! Origami bird, hey! Little birdie. Come on. Oh, come down already. Everyone's staring at you. No, it's not the best time to do that. Sorry. I'll catch up with you later. <gasps> hey, did you see that? The gray haired one outside. Don't look around, just focus on your drink. Seriously, they look like a total lunatic. Is that... him? Yeah, you heard right. I've got him. He's been hiding at the moment of Sol and Pinnacone, using a fake identity. And he even posed as a professor at Paperfold Academy. I've made a deal with the family. I'll leave the extradition-related paperwork to you. How'd I find him? Well... Let's just say I had some help from an influential figure. Don't ask for the details. Twenty-two years. Yeah. Twenty-two years of chasing this guy all over the cosmos. You know? Never thought it'd end up like this. Right here. I'm gonna hang up for now, partner. I need to raise a glass to myself. Wow. 
All of their wishes actually did come true. <laughs> but... I just don't understand. How did she do it? And what does Pawn really mean? <sighs> I should go back and ask. So you're back, Miss Samuel. Yeah. I found those people. And it seems their wishes did come true after visiting the Bonajade Exchange. But I'm not sure what you want me to see. They all seem to be living... fulfilled lives. Not so fast. This step was just to show you that the Bonajade Exchange is genuine. That I had the power to grant their wishes. And now, I'll tell you the price they paid. Del was from a wealthy family. He was head over heels for Dorothy, and wanted to win her heart. So he made a deal with me. He put up his entire fortune in exchange for a gift that would impress Dorothy. It was a piece of cake for me, thanks to my IPC connections. However... Del will soon find himself evicted from the dreamscape, because he can't afford his room. Whether he can bounce back from poverty, well, that depends on him. Let's just hope that Necklace will keep their relationship from crumbling. Then there's Stacy, a lady with a gambling addiction. She wanted some serious luck, but she had nothing to offer, so I took something else instead. I took away all her close relationships. From the moment she stepped out of the Bonajade Exchange, every casino in the cosmos would remember her name. But her parents and siblings would sever ties with her, and it would be impossible for Stacy to make any real friends again. She will accrue a vast wealth due to her good luck, but she'll never be able to use it for the people who truly matter to her. As for Detective Walker, he spent two decades chasing down a wanted criminal for some heinous crime. But he never caught the guy. In his desperation, he came to me. He offered his own memory system as collateral. In due time, his memories as a detective will be erased, and he will completely forget his own identity and all the sacrifices he has made. Interesting, don't you think? I fulfill people's desires and grant them favors, and soon they come back to me with even greater desires. When people see others' desires get fulfilled, they develop their own desires. It seems like an endless cycle, but it does have a goal. In the end, I will get what I desire from this whirlpool. And patience happens to be one of my greatest strengths. So now, do you understand what you must give up, Miss Samuel? Or should I address you as... AR-26710, a remnant of Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Hmm. I'm not surprised. You are much calmer than I expected. <laughs> Entropy Loss Syndrome. Truly an unjust misfortune, isn't it? The higher-ups in Glamoth implemented such a failsafe within the genes of their warriors. Just to make sure the Republic's most powerful weapons wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. As for the price, those Iron Cavalries weren't exactly seen as regular, independent humans, so there wasn't really a price to be paid. However, you are different. You're now a Stellaron hunter, a living being named Firefly. Naturally, you want to continue your existence, but with the firmament front gone, the people who know the secret and can cure the disease are nowhere to be found. Are you suggesting that the IPC has a remedy? Well... There might be a silver lining. That's all I can say for now. I see. 
It's no wonder you said I can't provide anything of equal value. Because nothing I own holds any meaning. So... You're going to ask me to personally restrain my partners to ensure my own survival? Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. Partners. A nice way to put it. Now I'm even more curious about the Stellaron Hunters. Each of you has your own identity and a special bond with each other. It's strong and intimate, and yet it allows for independence. Just as the Ten Stonehearts follow Diamond, you follow your own leader. I wonder what they are like, and if all Stellaron Hunters are like you. Traveling on the path of finality, but struggling against your destiny. Attempting to move in the opposite direction. I really hope that one day, all of you will come and visit my pawn shop. I'll be waiting patiently for that day. Can I see this as an invitation? From Diamond to the Stellaron Hunters while keeping the IPC in the dark? Consider it more of a personal offer from myself. It doesn't represent the IPC or the Strategic Investment Department. The Stellaron Hunters have interacted with the IPC, but not the Ten Stonehearts. Our paths have never crossed. As for your offer, I can pass it along to my partners. But I have a question. You know who I am. And you must know that my partner is keeping an eye on this room. If she wanted to, she could let the entirety of Pierpoint know about it within a few mere seconds. What drives you to take such a risk? And extend this invitation on behalf of Diamond? Even if it could lead to your downfall. Simply put... You and I are the same. However, unlike you Stellaron Hunters or the Astral Express, we band together merely to obtain what we want. Each of us has our own past and destined ends, and on this journey, we have been invited by Diamond to join him. This journey could be either brief or long, as each of us carries a void in our hearts that can only be filled from the outside. So... Diamond made us a promise. To divide the power of the Emanator of Preservation into ten pieces, and give each of us a cornerstone to fill that void. Mortal flesh is fragile, yet my heart is unyielding like the monolith. For without this resolve, the way of preservation would fade into oblivion. So, you understand? This pledge goes beyond a mere oath. It's our collateral, in exchange for opportunities, wealth, survival, and a future. And whatever we gain from it will fortify the Stonehearts in return, allowing us to achieve the great cause of the preservation when the war among the Eons eventually comes. <laughs> I understand. Take your time, child. You don't need to give me an immediate answer. Like I said, patience is one of my greatest strengths. If fate turns that page, our paths will cross again. It's a shame, though, that this pawn shop can't give me what I desire. My last attempt in Penacony. <laughs> well, it ends with hope. Lady Bonajade, I've come to deliver the collaterals promised. <laughs>